Hello and welcome to today's video, a plan with me series where I, sh I will share with you tips and tricks and how I use my journals and my bullet journal and my passion planner to stay organized. In today's video, I want to stick to the basics and show you how I use my bullet journal to stay organized in a more meaningful and intentional way because it's not always about what you're doing, it's always also about who you are becoming and how you are spending your time and your energy every week and I try to be very mindful with what I include in my journal and how I plan my week because I want to make sure that I'm always mindful about how I'm spending my energy and my time and I will show you how I plan my week but also share with you a few tips how you can have a productive week and how you can like I said stay intentional and and very mindful about what you are doing in your time so let's get started so the reason that I love my bullet journal is that as you can see I can channel my creativity I can practice my calligraphy I can make it look as pretty or as basic as I want it to be yes it does require a bit more time because I have to organize how my page to look uh, what my page to look like and I have to plan it out a little bit more than just using a regular agenda or my passion planner however I do have the time right now and I do want to combine my creativity and my need to plan and organize and that is why I love my bullet journal it is a really fun way to channel my creativity and my organizational skills so that is why i'm starting with my bullet journal because i've been doing it for a couple of years and i truly truly love it so here are the steps that i follow to plan my week the first step is to re review last week's list to see what was not done and what needs to be carried over to this week that i need to accomplish so this is a great thing to look at because if ever you miss anything, if ever you forgot something, or if ever you didn't finish something, then you know that you have to accomplish it this week. It's very simple, it's very basic, but it is step one. An important tip that I will share here as well is it's an very important to schedule in downtime and self-care and things for your personal development. Every week I schedule in time for a movie night for example i schedule in time for calligraphy i schedule time in to cook and to try new recipes because that's something that i enjoy doing um, i schedule in a pampering session at home which doesn't have to be complicated but i do schedule in because when you schedule in something when you put it in your list you are more likely to do it and i always want to make sure that i'm balancing out everything that i needed to do like errands and stuff and I make sure that I balance that out with other things that feed that take care of my mind and my body as well and that is why I always schedule in downtime and things that I enjoy doing that make me feel happy and then help me create a more intentional and mindful life so that I can cultivate more happiness and joy in my day to day. So step two of what I do to plan my week is after I've looked at my list from last week, I map out my to-do list and my blogging list, the things I have to do for my blog, and I write out everything that I want to do that week. Tip number two um, is to have an A, B list and to learn how to prioritize. It's easy to get caught up in everything that we want to accomplish, and what's helped me a lot is to know how to prioritize, to know what need to get done this week and things that if they don't get done this week that if they get carried over that it's okay this helps me feel more accomplished this helps me put a bit less pressure on myself of everything that i need to get done and that if i if i don't get done the, the things from b list then it's okay and i feel less guilty and i'm more mindful with my energy and my time as well Tip number three is to break down my tasks into smaller steps to make it less overwhelming because this will increase your chances of getting things actually done. It's easy to get overwhelmed if you write things like clean the house. No, break it down. What are the areas that you need to clean? For example, maybe you can put it by section and that way as the week goes by, if you clean the kitchen, you can check that off. If you clean the bathroom, you can check that off. If you did the laundry, you can check that off. That way you feel less overwhelmed. You know what to tackle. And as you go and you're able to check things off, you will feel more fulfilled and you will feel more, more motivated to keep going and to stay on track with your to-do list. So tip number three is a really important one. Break it down into smaller, more manageable steps. 
Step number three, I had to mention this as a separate step, is to make sure you include a list for healthy living such as exercising and any meal ideas that you might have. This is an important step if you want to create healthy and mindful habits because like I said before, the when you schedule things in, you are more likely to do it. So I always plan out my week in terms of what days I want to work out because once I have an, when I have an idea of how my week is going to look, if it's going to be busy or not, I know what evenings are going to be booked and what evenings are more free. That way I can plan out my workouts. If, for example, in the weeknights I do not have time, then I will schedule more workouts in the weekend. And if I know that one day I might be working longer hours, then for example, that evening I can schedule in something a bit more gentle like yoga. So make sure to include a list for healthy living, whatever that means for you. For me, that includes exercising and meal ideas. And in my to-do list, it also means self-care like pampering or doing calligraphy as well these are all related to your mental and physical health schedule it and it will happen so once i have my list for my blogging work and my to-do list and the exercising and the meals that i want to eat that week when i have everything uh, figured out then now step four is to map out what i want to get done every single day now i used to be a lot more rigid with how i schedule my days i've learned to be a little bit more flexible and allow a bit more leave leeway and a bit more space for just going with the flow however if there are specific things that i need to get done i make sure to map out my week to make sure that i have enough time during the week to get everything done so there are some days that i will schedule specific things in especially on the weekends for example on sundays i will schedule in cooking or baking or meal prepping for the week um so i make sure to plan some things like exercising as well for example or pamper session moving night. i like to do that on a friday or saturday evening but i do allow with um i do give myself a little bit of leeway that way i can go with the flow and if one evening or one day i'm feeling more tired i'm feeling more less inspired then i will allow myself a little bit more flexibility to not do all the things that i wanted to get done which leads us to step five to have an organized week is to make sure that on a daily basis you do review your planner whether you use an agenda a bullet journal or a digital agenda i review my bullet journal or my agenda every single day on a daily basis every evening every morning that way i am reminded of everything that i want to accomplish that week i am reminded of the exercising i want to do i'm reminded of the meals that i can eat i can be reminded of the mindful habits and practices that i'm trying to cultivate like being like self-care and doing things like calligraphy to infuse some joy into my days Usually what I do is I plan out my week on a Sunday and every evening I sit down and plan out the following day. That way I can assess what I got done and I can see how I can plan the next day a bit better to assess my to-do list, to reprioritize if I'm falling behind in some things, just to make sure that I am on top of everything that I want to be accomplishing. And the last tip that I want to include is to have a tracker for your habits and the routines that you're trying to cultivate. This is also a daily practice that I have. I always review my habit tracker and I review it every single day because not only is this a visual reminder of the things that I'm trying to cultivate like drinking more water and being positive and mindful eating and um practicing my morning and evening routine and moving my body these are things that i know but that can i can forget sometimes and by reviewing my daily tracker for the habits i'm trying to cultivate i am constantly reminded of the things that i'm trying to cultivate and this will help me anchor them in my mind and throughout the day the following day i can remember what i have maybe missed the previous day so that is a really important tip that i have for you have a tracker for your habits and the routines that you're trying to cultivate especially if it's a new habit that you're trying to cultivate this will really help you stay on top of it stay motivated and to continue so that is all I had for you today. These, This is how I plan my week. This is how I stay organized. This is how I use my bullet journal to create a more meaningful and purpose-driven life. I really feel as though my 
planning and my journaling and my bullet journal really helped me stay on top of everything that I'm trying to cultivate and accomplish. It's been a very interesting balance between between being organized and very scheduled and disciplined and allowing a little bit of flexibility and downtime that is something that I'm just trying to still learn and some of the tips that I shared with you in this video have helped me be more mindful of that as well because at the end of the day we are not human doings we are human beings and at the end of the day we need to remember that every single day we are trying to cultivate and become the person that we want to be and that means to be more mindful with how we spend our time and to make sure that every single moment is meaningful and intentional and if that means that today you need to relax and sit on the couch and do nothing scroll on instagram and go on netflix then just do that mindfully and intentionally with the intention of relaxing and that is okay and that will bring you more joy and happiness and more energy to be able to have a more productive day the following day. So I hope that these tips were helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any specific questions or even better, let me know how you plan your week. Do you use an agenda or do you use a digital agenda? Have you ever used a bullet journal? What? What do you want to learn and how do you do your process? I always want to learn to improve my process. So if you have any tips that you use, please let us know. It's always great to share information and share what you know and your knowledge. And I love to hear from you. So let me know in the comments below if you have any tips or any questions. And I will answer them or use them if they are relevant to me so thank you for watching make sure to su subscribe if you want to catch more organizational planning videos from me um i will see you in the next video bye for now